Hey there and welcome to a brand new Blender tutorial. In this one we're going to basically create a texture map in order to emboss a logo onto a glass surface. Now this basically works for everything but in this case I'm going to use it for glass and I think that is what most people will use it for anyway. So without further ado uh, let's hop straight into our browser. Basically you can use GIMP, you can use Photoshop, but in this case I'm going to use the website photopia.com or photopea in order to get something that everybody can use because maybe you don't have GIMP installed or Photoshop so you can follow along using this. So without any further ado, let's go to the top left corner, click on file, then new. Now basically I'm going to call this test image. I have basically recorded this a lot of times so I already have some things preset. Basically what you want to do is change the width, the height to whatever value you want. I have chosen to go for 4k and uh, make sure that the background color is set to black. So if this is white for you just set it to black and you will be good to go. If you have everything dialed in the way you want it to click on create and you are greeted with a Photoshop looking background and a black square. So basically what we want to do is uh, get ourselves the text tool. It's down here. You can click on it or press T for text. And then I'm going to drag across the canvas like so. I'm going to call this attempt 46. I don't know. Uh, I stopped counting. So uh, basically, if this is not showing for you, chances are you have set your text color to black and then you're not going to see it. So just make sure that you set this here to white. Yes. Um, and if you want it to be centered like this, it's uh, going to be set to this setting here, which is going to align it to the left side. Just click on the middle thing here and it's going to basically set this here to the middle. So. Once you are happy with this, by the way, if you want to change the size, you can just select everything, go to 50 pixels, or uh, in this case, 350 pixels. You feel free to do that. So, whoopsie, I have deleted everything. Uh, attempt 47, oof. Um, so yeah, now in order to get this here, to be uh, well suited for your image texture or well, well suited for your bump map. Uh, what you want to do is uh, first of all set this to the center or whatever else you need depending on your UV lab of the object. I'm going to set mine to the center by getting this selection thing here, dragging over the entire canvas and now I'm going to center it in the middle like this and in the middle like this. Control and D in order to deselect it, by the way, with control and the mouse, sometimes you can zoom in, sometimes not. If it doesn't work, control and alt, because sometimes it does funky things. So yeah, uh, now that we have done this, I'm going to uh, basically combine all of this into one giant layer. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on this here and press shift, control, alt, and then E for extrude. So this is going to merge everything into one layer. So basically like this, as you can see, and uh, we want to convert this into a smart object. So how do we do that? Basically right click on it, convert to smart object. And now what is a smart object? A smart object is basically a, an image or a layer that, that you can change using filters and basically revert the changes without having to go through those past steps again. So yeah, I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And here you can basically choose whatever you want. I'm going to go for, I don't know, 15 pixels, like so. And that's going to blur it. So basically what that does is before we had really sharp text, which is going to look weird. When you, uh, when you try to emboss something because it's really, really weird that you actually go a cut like straight down and that's going to show in the texture. So when you do this step here, this is going to fade in and it's going to look like a rounding, like you've embossed it into your, uh, into your material. It's going to basically look more realistic. 
So next up, go to this half shaded uh, circle here, then go to curves. And basically here on the bottom line, you can basically see all the values from the dark values to the bright values. And here on the bottom, you can barely see it. We have uh, the whites, they start here. So basically this space here is unused. So in order to use the space, I'm going to just get this node here and bring it to the left side, something like this. Now this is, it's better to have it clipping just a little bit, of course not too much, but just a little bit uh, than to have some free space here. Uh, this, uh, the spaces that are clipping are basically going to be flat after the embossing. So if you use Photoshop, I suggest uh, using Alt and then dragging this here, then you can see the exact areas that are clipping. But unfortunately, uh, in this version or in this program, it is not possible, at least not to my knowledge. If it is good, if not, uh, basically have it clipping just a little bit. So if you are satisfied with the result, go to File, then go to Export As or Save uh, or whatever go to export as and I would suggest since this here doesn't support 16-bit PNGs uh, which I would use in this case since I'm doing bump maps uh, I would suggest you to choose TIFF because it's it has basically a higher uh, higher bit amount and therefore can store more data um, but if you do not uh, do not want to have that want smaller file sizes go for PNG not JPEG uh, since JPEG does some funky things to your image. Uh, now here you can again set the name, set the format, uh, set the resolution that you want to output, the quality. I'm going to leave everything as is. I'm going to save it. And it's going to automatically download and tell me that uh, I shouldn't use an ad blocker even though I'm not. So yeah, uh, let's open Blender again. And here I have a scene set up. It's the one that I've been showing you before. And uh, now I'm going to apply my text to this. Uh, let me see. I have basically really attempted this very often and my downloads for folder is full. I think it was this here. Is it? Hello? We'll see. Uh, basically, you want to uh, have this here going into a bump node. So just when, once you dragged it in uh, from your desktop or your download folder, you drag it in. Pull this node out and it's going to automatically give you a search and you just look for bump. Uh, plug this from the strength into the height and set the color space from sRGB to non-color. Now basically what we want to do is unwrap this. I have already placed my seams since this is again not my first time recording this tutorial. I'm going to select everything, press U, unwrap and now I'm going to show you what you need to do. So basically plug this bump into the normal socket and go to UV editing there. As you can see, it placed everything inside here. And you want to have only the, uh, the side facing you in this square. So how would you go about doing that? Basically, what you need to do is, yes, um, Hover over the area that you want. Uh, for me, it's cut off from uh, by this seam and this seam. So I'm going to press L while hovering over it. I'm going to go back into this panel here. Then I'm going to press S to scale it. I'm going to make it fairly big. G to move it around. And here I'm going to rotate it by pressing R and then 90 to basically have this. Is this the wrong way around? Yes, it is. So R 180 again, uh, and then I'm going to move it to the place that I want it to be at. Now it might happen, like in this case, that you get some uh, of the texture on the back side or anywhere else uh, where you wouldn't want it to be, uh, or for instance, somewhere over here, I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. Basically now by scaling this and moving this, you can make this bigger, the smaller the, the, smaller the tile here, the bigger the texture will appear. So I'm going to scale and move attempt 47, oof, and basically place it in the location that I want. So right here. I'm going to invert my selection. So by pressing Ctrl and I, and as you can see, some part is 
having this texture overlapping. It's probably something inside, that's why we can't see it. But if I was to put it right, like right here, or this, yeah, you can see that you get uh, some things somewhere where you wouldn't want them to be. So I'm going to put this outside here, but as you can see, in some places, you can still get them. Uh, you can still get the texture displayed uh, even though it's outside of the square, and we're going to get rid of that in just a moment. I'm going to show you how to do this. So basically, in order to get rid of it, you want to set the texture from repeat to clip, and now that is not going to happen anymore because it's clipped to the actual size of the uh, image texture. So uh, now if I go into a rendered view, we are going to see that this is actually working and it's looking pretty good, but it's a little, a little bit too aggressive. So I'm going to put this to 0 0.005. Maybe even lower, 0 0.5, yes, something like this. It's a lot less aggressive, a lot uh, a lot more realistic. I think this looks great. So, yeah, without any further ado, that would be it. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, you can see me in the next tutorial that I will upload. Uh, if you didn't, well, sucks for you, then why did you stay until the end? Well, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.